Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Like, dislike, comment for the engagement, subscribe, resubscribe if you've been unsubscribed. For today's video, I'm going to talk about the series I saw, ha Hannah Gabby's, Gabby Hannah's series. I was in bed with potentially mild food poisoning, so I thought what better way to make myself feel better than watch Gabby Hannah's series and I have some feelings about it. But first I have to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelance and more. Everything I have learned about life has come from Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare, very cool. Skillshare is for everyone including beginners, intermediates, advanced people, lifelong learners, the list goes on. Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and class projects with classes to fit your schedule and skill level. And most of the classes are under 60 minutes so they can fit your schedule. It's curated specifically for learning, which means there are no ads. Look at this class. It's a bit different from usual. It's quite nice, isn't it? Indoor gardening, how to grow houseplants, veggies, and herbs, not herbs, by Ektar Chaudhry from Garden Up. That is really interesting. It's really different actually. So why not give that a bash? And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description box will get a one month free trial. So you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So let's get on with it. So the preface, is it preface or preface? I can never tell. Of this series is a video called Storytime Confessions of a Washed Up YouTuber. And right off the bat, yeah, the intros of each video has this scratchy pin doodle noise that I just, I hate. So thanks for nothing, Gabby, already. <laughs> already, I'm irritated and on edge. Sober, chilling, going about my everyday life shit and just talking. And then the second half of it, I just like smoked a J and talked about whatever came to mind with absolutely no restrictions. In doing that, I was able to fully process trauma that I wasn't able to do in, okay, in years of therapy. It was she rationalizes that she made this series to process her trauma. She says it a few times throughout the entire thing and here she says that it helps her more than therapy has helped her. And yet I don't know what to think about this because sure YouTube can be used as a platform to share experiences and that in itself can be quite cathartic. I do it, plenty of people do it when we share our lived experience, you know, it feels good to do so, might help other people. But I don't know if I can understand the mindset behind it helping to process trauma. But maybe that's just a failing on my end. After all, I am open to looking like a massive ignoramus. I'm totally fine with that. I guess I just don't really understand how YouTube could be the right place for that kind of introspective development. Because it's one thing to share experiences, talk about, you know, past behavior, etc. But it's enough, it's another thing to work on that and if it is possible to undergo introspective development using YouTube is that exactly healthy because someone like Gabby Hanna is under the scrutiny of literally millions of people five million followers so is it entirely healthy to do that I don't know leaving that one with you you guys tell me there's something that she says that kind of tickles me she says that she feels powerless and voiceless all the time but before doing this series so this series helped her find her voice and take back her power except how is this true when there's clips of her screaming high school bullies on a podcast like a year or two ago how is it true that you've been Gabby Hanna has been anything but voiceless for years she's always been yelling about something right so I'm not sure that's entirely true she discusses medicating her ADHD, good for you. Then she does this for a bit. She 
She also reveals that she broke up with her boyfriend, but she's being very, very, very nice about him. So there's that. I had my autonomy and my voice completely stripped from me time and time again. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't find an escape. I couldn't find an answer. I tried ignoring it. It got worse. I tried responding politically and politely and it got worse. I tried talking directly to the people who painted a target on my back and it got worse. So she has this whole bit about victimizing herself here while showing clips of Jesse Smiles crying on the phone because of Gabby's actions. Zero self-awareness. We love to see it. Belong in a mental hospital. And if my fans or literally anybody defended me or even dared to interact with me in any way, then they were evil too. And then they got berated, they got harassed, they got doxxed, their families were harassed, literally. She's throwing her wine glass around so much. Please just stop that. Just put it on the floor, just stop it. The goal has always been to discredit and isolate me so that they could continue to exploit me and profit off me. Oh yes, good, I love this part. This is my favorite part where she accuses everyone else in existence of being a narcissistic abuser. Boy, everybody is a narcissist except for me. A lot of people saying I've lost it or <laughs> vultures swarming. So she keeps putting on the screen thumbnails from other people's videos about her, yet none, I forgot what I was gonna say then, none of mine. So the only thing I'm inferring from this is Gabby Hanna, do you secretly like me, the big and easy easy? I am brilliant, so I don't see why you wouldn't. It made me feel really powerful to make so many people talk about me at my whim to go viral with little to no effort at all. All I have going for me is that millions upon millions of people fucking hate me. And that's a really valuable fucking resource. So like, fucking lemonade. You want me to be drama? Okay, here's the drama. You want me to be fucking crazy? Okay, I'll be fucking crazy. You want a fucking villain? All right, sure, I'll show you a fucking villain. Look, Gabs, can I call you Gabs? Yeah, this is kind of cringe, Gabs. You aren't some sort of evil super villain mastermind. This isn't a TV show. You're not, I don't know, me, so just, Tone it down a little bit, Gabs. I wanna make art for a living, and I am. I've been trying to quit YouTube since 2018. Like, that was my plan, but then I became a fucking meme, and then it just, like, it was one thing after another, and I just wanted to leave on a high note, and I was waiting for a moment that just... How can you want to quit YouTube and yet still post videos? It's not like we all signed a contract with Susan Wojcicki. If you don't wanna do YouTube anymore, you just have to not film videos, edit videos, upload videos, and then press the publish button. You can literally stop uploading. If you wanna quit something, then making an entire series about yourself is antithetical to that. This is such a non-issue. It's so fucking much, the idea of letting people win who wanted to see me fail, who wanted to see me quit, who wanted to see me leave the platform. I hate giving them the satisfaction. Gabby really has a lot of faith in her shirt here. Anyway, she kept going on like this tirade and then I got bored, so I just went on to the next episode. The next episode is chapter one, revisiting rice gum drama. She opens talking about her ADHD, which is kind of predictable, not gonna lie. However, I'm so sick of people not understanding that when you are harassing somebody online, you are bullying them. Social media, is real life in a lot of contexts. Your words hurt me whether you say them to my fucking face, which most of the time the people who say shit behind closed doors, when I say shit to their face, they, what? I never said anything. She has this whole thing about defending Khloe Kardashian from people complaining about her plastic surgery. And I can get behind that, totally get behind that. You know, if you want plastic surgery, go nuts. I need to change my entire face. But then Gabby manages to like spin it into don't be dicks to me. Like I thought Tana Mojo was the best at making everything about herself, but maybe there's just something in the water in LA, I don't know. And when you're on that type of platform that Khloe Kardashian is on and people are constantly fucking saying shit about the way you look and then your job is to sell products or be entertaining or have a show or do social media and that's your whole fucking job and you can't do it without people fucking berating you, you're mean. You're just mean. There is some amazing irony in seeing Gabby Hanna yell, you're just mean at her camera. We 
Again, love to see it. She even mentions Megan Fox being over-sexualized as a teenager and I can get behind this. Like, yes, Gabby, I do agree with you here. I don't agree with the messenger, but I do agree with the message. Leave Ariana Grande alone. Leave these fucking women alone. Leave Taylor Swift alone. Leave these women alone. Leave women alone. <laughs> Again, the massive irony in her yelling, leave women alone. For some reason she goes on about Piers Morgan's bizarre obsession with Meghan Markle and yep, I can get behind that, I'm with you on that Gabby. And then she manages somehow to relate it back to her as if her situation is at all comparable to the entirety of the British press hounding Harry and Meghan so much that they both turned around and went, alright, see ya, toodle pip and fucked off to Canada. Gabby. Enough. Here's fucking Morgan, you spineless fucking dickless cuck. Are you kidding me? Gabby calls Piers Morgan a cuck and honestly that's probably the best thing Gabby Hanna has ever said. In fact, Gabby, if you dislike him that much, you should read my short story, Piers Morgan's Vegan Lover. It's a thrilling novella. I've simply written here, she starts smoking a joint, wish I could smoke, lol. I think I was having a moment then, but it seemed to have passed. So she starts talking about the rice gun situation and how he got away with it and bragged about it. And honestly, the success of rice gun is completely beyond my understanding. It is inexplicable. I would have a better chance at comprehending quantum mechanics than comprehending how rice gum is popular. Like he was on a stream mocking a woman about her sexual assault. And this guy is so popular, it baffles me. Also, I googled rice gum. So I think I wanted to check how old he was. And he's 24. Like he's still, he's been 24 for the past five years. This is some Mandela effect because how is he still 24? I'm very confused. She shows a clip of rice gum wrapping and tearing into her appearance. And honestly, he's just terrible. So nothing more to say on that really. Understandably, she laugh cries for a little bit. And then she does the cardinal sin of talking whilst eating. I just need to be on my like, no fucks shit right now. And what was driving me nuts too about that is I feel like everyone kept saying that I kept changing my story. And I was like, where? What story did I change? She says how during the rice gum situation, no one defended her, no one was on her side apart from Tana Mojo and a few other people. I might be misremembering this, but I'm so sure that a bunch of commentary channels like, like maybe not exactly pyrocynical, but of that caliber, I'm just very sure that those types of channels were on her side because they disliked rye scum and they disliked Keemstar. Maybe I dreamt that though. Moving on to chapter two, holding tea channels accountable justice for Bianca Devins. So in the beginning of this video, she's just mucking around. She's got a new watch and she's being silly, but I don't know if that's the right tone to take for a video that has a serious subject matter towards the end of it. Um, what, just kind of really, 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 there's a beauty YouTuber I watch called Steph Toms who recently, like I want to say within the past year, got diagnosed with ADHD. And she shared a lot of details about that with her audience because she was stoked to, well, have an explanation for some of her behaviours, have an answer finally, probably after just being told most of her life that you can't focus and it's your fault, etc, etc. But like having a concrete, you know, ah, so that's how my brain works. So she's excited to share that with everyone because I remember all her Instagram stories about it. And I think she also wanted to help educate people a little bit and I vibe with that. I think that's cool. I think that's fine. But I don't think that's what Gabby's doing when she goes on about it constantly. I don't think she actually wants to educate or inform people. I think she, this is my hot take, this is my conspiracy theory. I reckon that she talks about it so much so that she can just easily pluck it out of the air and be like, Look, see, no wonder I was being so horrible that day. My ADHD was playing up and I was hyper-focused on just being really, really mean to people. That's what I think she's doing because I'm very cynical and jaded. I love my cat so much. Freddie and I are so <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Fuck, the ADHD test, fuck! Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Like this entire segment here feels a little bit too forced, you know? In doing that, it's because I misunderstood the tone of the tweet that I was reading and I interpreted it incorrectly and then responded incorrectly. But then everybody attacked me for it, um, saying that I was ableist against neurodivergence when I am actually very neurodivergent. But I will say again, She's saying that because she has ADHD, she can't be ableist, but that's not really how that works, right? I'm a woman and I could be misogynistic and sexist if I wanted to be. I just don't because I don't want to be misogynistic. So it's not really something that I do. You're all welcome, ladies. I don't feel like a bad person anymore. I just don't think that I'm for everybody because I respond to things differently and I interpret differently and I communicate differently. And it helps me understand my mood a lot because of mood swings that come with that and the complications with kind of regulating your impulsivity or your emotions. Now I know that I'm not this awful person that everybody said I am. I'm just different than you. This is a cop out. You can't bully people like Rachel Oates and then just say, see he, I just communicate differently. It's not my fault that I called you a bitch several times and had my fan base harass you who then proceeded to get your Instagram temporarily taken down. See he, I'm just neurodivergent. Like, stop, you can't do that. Well, I mean, you can do that. Sorry, it's not up to me to say what you can and can't do. You just might not be very popular if you do that. I responded to a lot of stuff the way that it made sense for me to respond to. And because it wasn't the way that you felt comfortable with, everybody said that I was like a bad person, or like a monster or a manipulative person or... She loves the bigger easy easy confirmed soulless or sociopath. I think that's where we need to open up a conversation again of understanding that you may not like the way that somebody behaves or the way somebody handled a situation, but you don't get to dictate other people. You don't understand what's going on with them or how they processing. Everybody has a different point of view. So just because it doesn't align with yours doesn't make it wrong. I'm going to say something a little bit uncomfortable here, Gabby, because I disagree with your logic and I want to point out some of the fallacies in it. What's stopping someone saying this exact same thing in defense of rice gum against you? Like when he made all those nasty raps and comments like you, he was just handling the situation in a way that you don't like because his brain works differently and thus he is still valid for doing that. No, he was behaving like a bit of a dickhead and it's not excusable. And neither is the way that you go around bullying smaller content creators and then blaming it on being neurodivergent. Shh. I just feel it like at some point our tolerance for people being different and having different personalities and traits went out the window. <laughs> sure, maybe, but behaving like a bully isn't a quirky trick. I don't know why I'm bothering. I don't know why I'm bothering in one ear, out the other, no one cares. So 18 minutes into this video, she begins to talk about the Bianca Devin situation. Perhaps this segment could have warranted its entire own video instead of all the silly messing around in the beginning. Who knows? The mother doesn't want this topic to be discussed publicly in this way anymore. So I'm not talking about it, not giving an opinion on it. We're going to move on. Chapter three, to the people I've hurt, past problematic content. In this video, she talks about her past content that hasn't aged well and she apologizes for it. There's nothing here for me to discuss, so moving on. Chapter four, escape the nightmare. Anyways, I'm ready to get back into like a healthy lifestyle. The only thing I miss is my fat ass. Oh my God, I've had such a fat ass and now I don't. She starts this one off by yelling about missing her, her words, fat ass. Thanks for that, Gabby, very cool. Look at my curves, dude, I'm so, I'm such a sexy motherfucker. Look at me. I'm like a, I'm a spider ass bitch, dude. Lovely. You are both being so lazy, are you depressed? Oh, why are you so cute? And little baby girl, why are you so cute? There is a lot of cat content in these videos, so I guess that's nice. Even though I has work, I has work, I has work, but I also has a cat, I has a cat, I has a cat. I love my cat. I love my cat. Oh, oh. Bye, Fred. Nice to see you. Oh, I just got really nauseous. Ugh. Manic Pixie Dream Girl, very big quirky. 
She prattles on about St. Patrick's Day with her boyfriend for a bit. And honestly, I don't know why this made it into the final cut. You're, you're not as interesting as you think you are, Gabby. Come on. Then she gets into a fight with a squirrel and loses. Best anime, 10 out of 10. Number one trending on Crunchyroll. She's going on about some scam she was a part of. And she mentions Angelica Oles by name yet again. Gabby, just ask her out already because this is getting a tiny bit embarrassing. Everything has to be so specific with YouTube videos where it's like, okay, if you uh, in your apology are like fidgeting or moving or your body posture, that means that you're uh, lying because you're doing, dude, no, I have ADHD. This is the hyperactivity of it. The tapping of the foot, the jittering, like this is fucking, the swaying back and forth, like this is fucking part of it. I do all that fidgety stuff too. Oh my God, maybe I have ADHD. I've done some Googling in my time and I do actually have the vast majority of adult ADHD symptoms. In fact, I've never been able to focus on anything for extended piece ever. Even in my, my report cards when I was like in an eight year old, they say the wiggle easy easy, that is what my teachers referred to me as in junior school. Very intelligent, thank you, thank you. But is always daydreaming, doesn't focus. Also, I had one report card once that said, she's becoming very opinionated. <laughs> How rude, bet they wouldn't have said that about a boy. Where was I? Maybe distracted easily. Maybe I should get an official diagnosis and then never, ever, 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 ever shut up about it. <sighs> just like fucking imagine if I would have had the chance to just say that and be like, let's figure this out. Let's set up an email that I can try to contact these people. Let me contact the fucking company first. Like, let me do something before you start a tabloid that I'm a scam artist, dude. Why does she keep calling drama channels tabloids? Is it to make herself feel more important because tabloids are akin to, you know, national newspapers, not just like select corners of the internet. Not even the internet, select corners of YouTube. So 20 minutes into this 40 minute long video, she finally starts to talk about Escape the Night. I've already seen Joe Crisefers and Mr. Prazer, is that his name? Daniel? Right, it's Daniel, right? Danny, my good mate, Danny boy. I'm, jo I'm such an asshole. No wonder no one likes me. I've already seen their videos, so I can't wait to see uh, Gabby's. Fuck yeah, I'm dying to do this. But I didn't expect my reaction in that type of work environment. And it was like, not good. Like I was just unprofessional. Dude, a lot of people have a lot of stories about me being unprofessional. I promise you that. Like there's no shortage of them. I used to be really difficult to work with and probably in the wrong setting, I'm still really difficult to work with. She talks of being unprofessional and then she puts up her ADHD screenshots onto the screen. This is honestly, like it's over the top, it's so ridiculous. And the entire comment sections on these videos are just full of people saying, I have ADHD, you don't represent us, you're making us look bad. Like stop blaming ADHD on every aspect of your life. It was not an enjoyable experience for me. I do not want to embarrass myself like that again. So then Joey and Daniel are like, please, we really want you to be a part of the show. We loved you in season two. You looked beautiful. Like you brought so much like shit to it. Tell us what you need to make us make you feel comfortable and we'll make sure you have it. And I laid it out pretty clearly. In each meal, I need a protein, a carb, and a vegetable. I sent specific meals just so there was no like question. And I was promised that that would happen. Yeah, her meal requirements weren't honored because she didn't fill out the food dietary requirements sheet list like a month before the shoot like she was meant to so that was important to me i also brought up that i was extremely uncomfortable the first season my dress was very restrictive i couldn't lift my arms like that gives me severe anxiety like dude i'm a very fragile person i know wait she couldn't lift up her arms much in her outfit mate there is so much more than that I would be more than willing to put up with if it meant getting paid thousands of pounds to be in a show that's going to be watched by millions of people. Imagine Gabby Hanna on I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. Oh my God, she won't even last like the plane ride over to Australia. Like maybe I'm being a dick here, but I find this such a finicky complaint. It is literally like dealing with a toddler. She's getting upset saying the whole shoot was difficult for her because of, you know, the food issue for one thing, but there was nothing preventing her from bringing her own food. And it's shown in Daniel's video that they were doing more than they should have to accommodate her and her needs. Like regarding the food issue, 
especially. Gabby is so demanding and inflexible. Everyone has to just drop what they're doing and cater to her all of the time. And that just sounds exhausting to be around. Most of her complaints about the Escape the Night set are just what it's like to be on a set. And Daniel's video had all the text and voice notes to back his side up. I mean, even the text that she's showing on the screen in her video, she looks like she's being the annoying person here. So anyway, Gabby is fully exaggerating and even lying in some parts. I don't think Daniel and Joey were talking shit about you. I think they were talking facts. Chapter five, Trisha Paytas can't stop lying. That scribbly scratching sound makes me feel ill. <laughs> I hate it. Hello, good morning. Actually, no, it is for sure 6 p.m. Hello, happy 6 p.m. I have been, oh, dude, I'm feeling so much like myself lately, my old self. I've been asking myself for so long, how did you do it? What was your work ethic? How the Why the fuck is she talking whilst brushing with her teeth? Who does that? Why are you being so annoying? Just stop. I'm sure what you're saying isn't so fucking important that you couldn't just wait three minutes to brush your teeth first and then get on camera. Sort it out, Gabby. Really think about that for a second. Imagine thinking that like you're that great, that people need to see you brushing your teeth and trying to talk through a toothbrush. At this point in the viewing saga, I was so bored of her blaming everything, she, everything she does on the HHD that for the rest of this video, I'm going to try to not entertain it or give it any more attention. Gabby has a rant defending bad baby, and then she says, Nobody's stable as they're a teenager. If you find fame when you're a teenager, you're definitely not gonna be stable. I have this theory. I think that people get emotionally stunted at the age that they found fame or success. I truly believe that, self-included. I was 22 when I started Vine. I had no reason to change. I've heard other people say this, so it's not your theory, Gabby. Plus, Tana Mojo was a teenager when she found success and started getting places with YouTube. So why, allegedly, were you so mean to her, Gabby? Really activates the almonds, doesn't it? Her aunts defending other people aren't coming out of the goodness of her heart. It's so she can also defend her own behaviors. She's projecting, basically. She is right in some of what she's saying, but I don't believe it's for the benefit of these people she's defending. Then she just goes on about her holiday, so I skipped that bit. She has a huge tirade where she cries a lot and says she doesn't care if people think that she's manipulative. Then she vaguely calls people, I'm not sure who she's referencing, probably me, probably everyone. She calls just everyone sociopathic monsters. She also says she lost faith in humanity completely for a bit. I wonder what that was like to have faith in humanity in the first place. I have my flaws and shortcomings. I think I've hopefully made that clear that like I know that, but like I'm not evil. I can be mean. But I'm not evil. I'm not malicious. Some people are just mean fucking people, dude. And like, like to see other people hurt. Being mean is partly malicious, right? And every single person on this planet is capable of being malicious. You need to know these things about yourself and know what you're capable of so that you can then have the self-awareness to not do that bad thing. It's like some basic Jungian shadow of self stuff. Also, here you are directly contradicting your BuzzFeed article where you kept being mean about Rachel Oates, so shh. Whenever I think of shh, I just think of Nicocado Avocado being like, shh, it's your fault, little slavs. <laughs> you are mean. You have no respect for them. They are too respect for anyone. It's precious here. <laughs> what a legend. I'm going to expand on the shadow of self stuff for a bit, so I'm going to be talking about myself a little bit because that's how I can relay to you what I mean. I know that when I was using cocaine a lot, it wasn't a deal breaker for me to be around, like to me, it wasn't a deal breaker for me to be around less than savory people because they were just people to do drugs with quite frankly. Now, I didn't hang out with murderers, rapists, pedophiles, like, you know, people like that. But I was partying with not amazing people, certainly not people that were helping my own personal development. It wasn't about that, it's about being dragged down. And there was a bunch of stuff that I was naive to, right? There were situations that I was naive to. 
Which that, like, that annoys me. That trips me up a bit because I've always been so cynical and jaded. Always thought, oh, I just know better than most people. And yet me being 21, partying with people who are much older and doing coke with them and stuff and, and being naive in those situations, not realising that, hey, that's not okay. It's not good. But then there were also things that I wasn't totally naive to. I just ignored the bad parts sometimes because I wanted to keep being able to do drugs with people, rich people, like whoever, whoever was doing drugs, basically. The cocaine, because it was cocaine that did this, not MDMA, but the, not that I'm defending MDMA, but out of all of them, it was coke that, you know, I was being a dickhead on. That's what mattered to me the most because being like this coked up, good time party girl was like the height of my existence at the time. I thought it couldn't get better than that. And sometimes when I think back to these behaviors, it does give me quite bad anxiety. Yeah, it does make me freak out a little bit because it's like, oh my God, well, you're, you're a fucking idiot. What were you doing? What were you doing? You're self-aware. You sh should have known better. You did know better in some regards, but you're still being stupid because I guess that's the addiction side, isn't it? Like you were just putting the drug first. I mean, I have weekly therapy over this stuff because I couldn't deal with the guilt and shame of it anymore. Look, I didn't kill anyone. It's not like that. It's not like so extreme, but it's just, you know, when you were just engaging in like bad behaviors and you know it's bad and just, God, I could have had a heart attack at any moment. I didn't, I didn't actually realize how bad cocaine was for you. So like still the cringe and guilt and shame, you know, I've been going to therapy for bloody ages now. And I mean, I still do think I am a bad person for those things. Even now, even after being sober for over two and a half years, because I, me here, know that I shouldn't have been in those situations in the first place. I also know that 21 year old me wouldn't have been able to help themselves and that they were young. But I can't quite totally forgive them. Weird, tricky, isn't it? But knowing that about myself, knowing that I have that capacity, that that's inside me, like the addict part of my brain, which is still me because it's still my brain, but that like side of my brain can overlook a lot of like, questionable things in the pursuit of drugs. And me knowing that stops me from engaging in that bad behavior. So sometimes Gabby, yes, you have to admit, yes, I do have the capacity to be a cunt. But in knowing that about myself, I'm stopping myself from being one. Not sure I can be mean sometimes, but I'm not malicious and everyone else is just big and evil and bad. Everyone but me. Boy, everyone is evil except for me. 18 minutes into this 47 minute video, she begins talking about Trisha Paytas. Kind of lucky timing for Gabby that Trisha had their fallout with Ethan Klein. Did all those ridiculous videos, Trisha's redemption arc thoroughly crashed and burned, right? So people watching this might actually be quite a lot more receptive to what Gabby is saying, you know, because of the extenuating circumstances. Personally, I think the pair of them engage in toxic behaviors. So there we go. I made the video is because she put my name out on the Instagram story first. She vehemently up and down denied that that happened. And I was like, no, I know because that's why I made the video. I, I did not want to make a video, but then I saw that you put my name. Like, I know that happened. Back on that point of how she was like, I never said your name first, you made the video. And I'm like, Gabby, like on the note of her saying like, I never put those text messages out first with your name. I'm like, you did. Did all this really start from Gabby spreading that Trisha had herpes, except Trisha doesn't have herpes. It's like the Nat has herpes graffiti in the UK. No one knows where it came from. No one knows where it's going. No one cares. I'll respond, but like, I'm gonna be nice. Like I truly try so fucking hard to be nice because if I wasn't a nice person, and yes, I'm gonna call myself nice because I fucking am. I hate when people are like, you wouldn't have to tell people you were nice if you were. You wouldn't have to say you're a good person if you were. Sometimes you fucking do. If you have to call yourself nice, you probably aren't. Shane Dawson, the empath. This is so insane. November 22nd, 2016, buying a VIP ticket to your show. Yes, yes, yes. And November 19th, 2016, my obsession with the Gabby show has been so unreal. I don't even understand. She's the most amazing thing on YouTube right now. May 10th, 2017, every time me and the Gabby show are together, we never get selfies. It makes me extremely depressed. Why is Trisha love bombing Gabby Hanna of all people to write simping tweets over? The only person deserving of simping tweets is Keanu Reeves, and that's a fact. I have a poster of him over there, hence why I pointed. 
I don't think either of them can deal with being public figures on the internet. But I've also come to realize you have a very weird skewed perception of what friendship is. Like you literally said Ethan and Elo weren't your friends. Uh, I don't know if I call them my friends. They're very well, nice. They're they are very nice and they do check up on me and stuff like that, but it's not like friendship. You don't know what friends are. That is your friend, dude. Ha! Wrong. Shut up. <laughs> so apparently Gabby did start all of this by saying, I have a friend sleeping with someone who might have herpes on her Instagram stories, leaving out Trisha's name. But what was that about not being manipulative? Because that sure is quite manipulative, especially if the person who's gonna view the stories knows that you're talking about them. Like you're still sharing private information about a public figure. Of course, someone as volatile as Trisha Paytas is going to see that and then see red. This is all very stupid. And that is some classic mean girl behavior from Gabby Hanna, like a high school bully. Honestly, I don't even care about whose side at this point. I just want both of them to finish it. Even watching this video and the back and forths is exhausting. Both of them should just agree to never speak about each other again. Trisha lies a lot and can't seem to ever get their story straight about a lot of things. But Gabby, you can't use that to deflect how manipulative you can be as well. But what's fucked up is when people called you out for those tweets, you went back and deleted them. That's so shitty, dude. That is so like for real manipulative. Like that's gaslighting. That's narcissistic abuse. Dead ass. Narcissistic abuse makes a stunning reappearance. The crowd goes wild. Huh? You told people you were afraid of me and that I was harassing you. One of Trisha's tweets says, if Gabby Hanna murders me, blame Keemstar for enabling it. I'm not kidding. The way he was egging on an actual psychopath is insane. All these people are so dramatic. Get a grip, go outside, take up a hobby, please. I've actually never dealt with an actual psychopath and I'm not saying that lightly and I'm not, this is a psychopath. Like look up the definition of a psychopath. Gabby is gross and she's a scary, scary, scary individual, scary. She's obsessive. Obsessive, even before I met her. Gabby, you are a monster. Mm -hmm. You're scary, obsessive, and obviously delusional. You are the scariest, so insane. I'm gonna have a spicy hot take here just to get on everyone's nerves. I'm gonna read directly from my script because this is a massive run on sentence and I just, I feel great today, so. <laughs> Gabby is calling Trisha a narcissistic abuser, right? But why is it okay for Gabby to blame everything she does, even that sneeze she had this morning on her having ADHD? Everything should be miraculously forgiven because it's not her fault, it's her ADHD. Even though everyone else with ADHD in the comments has been like, Gabby, shut up, you're making us all look bad. But if Trisha really is a narcissistic, abu narcissistic abuser, then why is it not okay to blame all of their behavior on that? And why can't Gabby say, well, it's not Trisha's fault, they have narcissism disorder? Doesn't Trisha actually have known mental health problems? So why is it okay for Gabby to be horrible to people like on the Escape the Night set, retroactively blame her ADHD and think everyone should just get over it because I had an undiagnosed problem, of course I was being horrid, that makes it okay. But why in the world, according to Gabby, can't Trisha have the same leniency? Discuss. You're a psychopath. You're a psychopath. You are crazy obsessive with me. It's scary. Bitch, scariest monster on the internet. Gabby. You are scary and dangerous. This. There's a whole video montage of Trisha saying about how scary Gabby Hanna is. Trisha, calm down. Gabby Hanna could not scare Courage the Cowardly Dog. All I'm getting from this video is that both of them are ridiculously dramatic and they want to paint the other person in the worst light possible. Literally, you tweeted that you were obsessed with me, that you want to come to my VIP. You buy the clothes I buy. I did a cleaning series, you did a cleaning series. I put out a poetry book, you put out a poetry book. Oh my God, did Trish actually? <laughs> Be right back ordering it. Thanks for the content. Watching all of this though, I do think Trisha is the bigger liar here. I don't know why I care, but I do think Trisha is the bigger liar here. So apparently they were nice to each other initially, but then they hung out together at a few parties. And after that, Trisha became really cold towards Gabby, cold and distant. Then Trisha went on to podcast saying that, you know, everyone in LA at these parties is really judgmental. I wonder what actually happened to it. I wonder if like something actually happened that neither of them are. I don't actually wonder what really happened. I'm bored with this now. I'm done with this bullshit from everybody. Like this has been the weirdest fucking few years of my life. For real, like, oh my God, I cannot wait to write a fucking book about this shit. Earlier in this video, she said, I just want to be left alone from people. And now it's turned into, tee hee, can't wait to write a book. Like, make up your mind. Again, this direct fucking projection of you are a mean girl, you lie, you spread rumors. Like have some fucking self-awareness, a drop. 
literally a drop of self-awareness would take you so fucking far. I can't deal with this anymore. It's like the Spider-Man meme. She said, this is why. You told Jason I have herpes. That's none of your fucking business. And I apologize to her. I could have given a better apology. I could have just said, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Gabby says, I apologize to Trish. And then the text on the screen says, sorry if you were hurt, but I did nothing wrong. Gabby, stop making me laugh. That is not an apology. Then Gabby just starts singing to herself to prove some sort of point and I'm done with this. Imagine literally everybody you thought was your friend talk shit about you all the time and then when you're not friends anymore because they're mean fucking people, they go online and shit on you. Or maybe you're just alienating everyone else around you, but okay. So I'm done with this. There is a part two of Gabby reacting to Trisha's videos and I'm not watching it because it's just, it's clearly going to be the same repetitive back and forth come up with that it's not my place to talk about the jesse smile situation and i am aware as of me doing this video gabby has just put up another video about the jesse smile like leave it alone not my place to talk about that not my place to talk about the bianca devon's situation either and i already mentioned gabby's new song bathtub video in a different video so that's it for this video that was way too long thank you so much for watching if you stuck through until here. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Wait, follow me on Instagram. Bye.